All right, let's dive into something truly groundbreaking today. We're talking about a project where indigenous sovereignty isn't just about land anymore, it's leaving the planet and heading straight into orbit. This is the story of Star Nations, a plan to build the world's first indigenous-led orbital AI data center. It's an incredible mix of technology, history, and a really radical vision for what the future could look like. It all kicks off with this incredibly powerful idea. For hundreds of years, sovereignty has been tied to the land, to physical territory, but Star Nations challenges that whole concept. They're arguing that in our century, real self-determination has to exist in the digital world too. And as this quote just perfectly captures, that world, well, it extends all the way into space. So to really get the deep cultural and economic heart of this project, you have to understand a central metaphor they use, the new bison. It's this brilliant concept that completely reframes what a nation's most valuable resource actually is in our digital age. Think about it. Historically, for many Plains nations, the bison was everything. It was the center of life. It provided food, shelter, tools, spiritual connection, the whole shebang. The argument here is that today, data and the power to process it, what we call compute, serves that exact same purpose. These are the modern tools for economic survival, and they're the key to preserving culture. So owning the infrastructure to control your data, that's the modern equivalent of managing the herd. Okay, so you might be thinking, why space? Why go through all that trouble? Well, the whole reason a project like Star Nations even needs to exist is because of two massive problems, one that's rooted deep in history and another that's a huge technological crisis that honestly affects all of us. First, you've got this historical pattern. For centuries, the economic story in places like Canada has been one of extraction. Resources were taken from indigenous territories, the wealth was made somewhere else, and the communities were often left behind. In the age of AI and big data, there's a serious danger of that exact same history just repeating itself. Second, there's a massive physical problem that we're all facing. The data centers right here on Earth, you know, the backbone of our digital lives, they're hitting a sustainability wall. I mean, look at this contrast. On Earth, they use unbelievable amounts of fresh water just for cooling, and they put a huge strain on power grids. But in orbit, you get zero water cooling because of the natural minus 270 degree cold of space. You use zero land, and you have access to 24-7, totally unfiltered solar power. The physics itself just offers a way better deal. And that solution? It's up in the stars. This is where the whole story pivots, right? From the problems we have here on Earth to this incredibly elegant and powerful vision in orbit. It's taking the idea of land back and launching it into a brand new frontier, skyback. So what is Star Nations exactly? Well, it's a planned constellation of super high-performance satellites flying in low Earth orbit. But here's the key. These are not just simple relay stations. They are flying data centers. They're equipped with advanced GPUs that process data directly in space. It's called edge computing in orbit, and it means you can do incredibly secure, high-speed processing without ever having to send sensitive data back down to Earth. And get this, this isn't just some science fiction concept. The work is happening right now. A prototype satellite they're calling StarCloud is actually scheduled for launch in November 2025. It's going to carry an enterprise-grade NVIDIA GPU into orbit, just to prove that modern AI hardware can handle the tough environment of space. The era of the orbital supercomputer is literally about to begin. But Star Nations is so much more than just cool hardware flying in the sky. At its very core, there's a really profound philosophical shift in how we think about data itself, and it's all guided by an indigenous worldview. This slide just lays it out perfectly. You've got these two competing ideas. The dominant Western model basically treats data as oil. It's a commodity you mine, you extract, and you sell for profit. But the indigenous model, data as kin, which is the foundation of star nations, sees data as something relational. It carries stories, it carries knowledge, it can even carry our genetic information. And because of that, it has to be managed with respect and with community consent. And this philosophy isn't just talk. It's put into action through the First Nations principles of OCAP. That's ownership, control, access, and possession. By putting data in orbit under indigenous sovereign jurisdiction, Star Nations creates what they call a digital Fort Knox. This setup protects it from foreign surveillance laws and gives nations an unprecedented level of control over their most sensitive information, like biometric and genetic data. 
Okay, so we've got the tech, we've got the philosophy, but how does this actually translate into prosperity for communities? Well, this is where the project builds a really powerful economic engine, one that's designed to turn that orbital infrastructure into real, tangible wealth for people on the ground. And this is absolutely crucial. We're not talking about a niche market here. The Canadian government alone has committed $2 billion to a sovereign AI compute strategy. Canada needs its own secure computing power, and Star Nations is perfectly positioned as a shovel-ready solution to meet that huge demand. The business model itself is built on seven distinct but interconnected commercial channels, which they call the Revenue Rivers. And look how diverse this is. It ranges from super high-tech services like renting out GPU time for AI training and quantum computing, all the way to providing critical infrastructure like secure government communications and much-needed broadband for remote Arctic communities. It's an incredibly stable and forward-thinking model. But here's what makes this model a true game-changer. The way the wealth is distributed. It is explicitly community-first. As you can see, about 70% of the profits that can be distributed go directly into a community dividend fund. This ensures that the benefits flow right back to the nations themselves. And that revenue isn't just an abstract number on a spreadsheet. It translates into real life-changing results. We're talking about funding that fills critical gaps, building homes, making sure there's clean water, funding language immersion schools, and even creating wealth funds to provide perpetual university tuition for young people. This is about building real intergenerational wealth. Now, a vision this ambitious doesn't happen overnight, right? It needs a clear long-term plan. And that's exactly what they have, a multi-decade journey that shows precisely how this constellation is going to grow and what its impact will be over time. So the roadmap unfolds in three clear phases. Phase one, which is happening right now, is all about proving the tech with the first handful of satellites. Then in phase two, starting in 2030, it's all about scaling up the constellation and, this is key, starting that flow of community dividends. By phase three, after 2040, the vision is for star nations to become a major global utility for AI processing with over 100 satellites in orbit. And this is so important. It's about more than just satellites and revenue. It's about building up human capital. The project has this really aggressive target to build a skilled indigenous tech workforce, aiming for 65% indigenous staff by 2050 and creating over 3,000 high-tech jobs in fields like data science, AI ethics, and satellite operations. So the call to action here is pretty clear. For governments, this is a strategic investment in their own sovereign infrastructure. For indigenous nations, it's a new path to diversify their economies away from just land-based resources. And for investors, it offers this unique sovereign ESG model, where you get those environmental, social, and governance goals, but they're achieved through a sovereign, self-determining entity. It's a way to combine high-yield returns with absolutely unmatched social impact. So we'll end with this final, really provocative thought. This project fundamentally redefines the boundaries of what territory and self-determination can even mean. It's asking all of us to imagine a future where indigenous innovation isn't just participating in the global economy, but is actively shaping its most critical digital infrastructure. So what does that future look like? That's a question definitely worth thinking about. 